um, look, we are in we are in unprecedented times. Okay, um, we're in dangerous times, as has been articulated here around the world and here at home. We need steady leadership. We need steady hands at the wheel. I, look, I regard myself as a as a wartime speaker. I mean, in a literal sense, we are. I knew that when I took the gavel. I didn't anticipate that this would be an easy path. Former Speaker Newt Gingrich posted a couple days ago on his social media that um, this is the hardest challenge that's faced a speaker probably in the history of the country, in the moment we're in right now. He said arguably uh, may be comparable to the Civil War, but maybe worse. This is my video update on this Wednesday, mid-day, April the 17th. Let's talk about some news. And let's start things off with House Speaker Mike Johnson saying that he is a wartime speaker. He is a wartime speaker of the House, and he's got some very tough decisions to make, a lot of money to allocate. Newt Gingrich told him that he's got some difficult decisions to make because He's a speaker of the House during, during a time in the U.S.'s history when the U.S. is at war. What war is uh, Mike Johnson talking about? I don't know. I really, really don't know because all I have heard for the last two years from the Biden White House is that we are not a party to this war, at least in reference to, to the conflict in Ukraine. That's what they've been telling us for two years. We are not a party to this war. We're not a party to this conflict. All of a sudden, Mike Johnson is telling us that he's a wartime speaker. I'm so confused. I really am so confused. So uh, Johnson, he is going to present to the House for, for, <laughs> for <laughs> spending packages one on Project Ukraine. It's a big one. It's a big one. Uh, $14 billion for Israel. Another spending package for Gaza. And another spending package for Indo-Pacific allies. Taiwan. China. <laughs> Taking on China. Conflict with China. Money for, for Taiwan. So four spending packages, but nowhere... Nowhere in all of these spending packages that Johnson is going to present to the House for a vote did I see anything about the southern border. No southern border. At least that's the way it looks right now. Here is what Rand Paul posted on Twitter X. The only place this country is or should be at war is at our own border. And right now, that war is being lost while money is being shoveled at countries around the globe by both parties. Rand Paul, spot on, Mr. Rand Paul. As always, uh, J.D. Vance, he actually is saying that the legislation that Johnson is going to put up for a vote actually makes it so that if Trump were to become president, he would not be able to lift any sanctions from Russia, which would mean that Trump would basically be, be unable to engage in any types of negotiations with Russia should he become president. This is what J.D. Vance posted on Twitter X. The legislation freezes the current sanctions regime on Russia and requires an act of Congress to change it. Maybe you like those sanctions or hate them or think they should be harsher. Whatever your views, the president should make this decision. Not if the president is Trump, Senator J.D. Vance. <laughs> Not if the president is Trump. If the president is Trump, then, then the goal is to remove as much power from Trump as possible, especially when it comes to foreign policy and especially when it comes to trying to negotiate some sort of settlement, peace, rapprochement with Russia. Can't have any of that going down. So here is what Zero Hedge is reporting. According to the Washington Post, 
A draft of Johnson's plan mirrors a Senate bill, but may not include humanitarian aid for Gaza. No humanitarian aid. Okay, in February, the Senate approved a bill which allocates $95.3 billion in supplemental spending, including $60 billion for Ukraine, $14 billion for Israel, $9 billion for Gaza, and $5 billion towards Indo-Pacific allies against Chinese threats. And while Johnson pretended that the Senate bill would be a non-starter in the House without border security measures, that's zero. There's zero in there for border security demanded by House Freedom Caucus Republicans as a condition of approving foreign aid. From what I read, Chip Roy was, wasn't even angry. From what I read, he, he left meetings with Speaker Johnson defeated, deflated, deflated and defeated. Uh, Marjorie Taylor Greene, she was angry. <laughs> she was angry. She called this entire uh, package a scam. And and it's money that's just going to be dished out to the military-industrial complex. Well, most of it will be dished out to the military-industrial complex. And 10% for the big guy. So that's uh, Mike Johnson. You know, as he was, he was uh, putting out his statement, Johnson looked very, very defeated. Very broken. He looked like a broken man. I don't know what the permanent state or the deep state, what they, what they tell these, these people when they reach a certain position of power in the government. I don't know what they tell them when they bring them into a room and, and talk to them when they reach a position like House Speaker. I imagine they, uh, I imagine they offer, offer some very lucrative things, but I also imagine they... They present some very terrifying things to, <laughs> to people that uh, reach a position of power. Maybe it's both. But uh, whatever, whatever they've told Mike Johnson, I'm assuming, I'm assuming that whatever they've told Mike Johnson when he became Speaker of the House, boy, did he look broken as he was delivering this statement. So Politico, they ran an article with the title, well, two titles, because <laughs> they changed the title. So the first title of this article that they ran was Why Ukraine is Losing the War. The West's failure to send weapons to Ukraine is putting Putin on course for victory. And then they ran a title, a new title, Ukraine is heading for defeat. The West's failure to send weapons to Kiev is helping Putin win his war. So they even changed the they changed the entire, the entire title. The West's failure to send weapons to Kiev is putting Putin on course for victory. And that also got changed to the West's failure to send weapons to Kiev is helping Putin win his war. Putin win his war. <laughs> not, not Russia win the war, his war. Putin is winning his war. The West's failure to send weapons to Kiev. And it was the West's failure to send weapons to Kiev is putting Putin on course for victory. Yeah, so, so they changed it up to be more, more propagandesque. <laughs> be more propaganda-like, I guess, is why they changed up the title. Anyway, Politico, they paint a very, very grim picture of the situation in Ukraine. Just ask a Ukrainian soldier if he still believes the West will stand by Kiev for as long as it takes. That pledge rings hollow when it's been four weeks since your artillery unit last had a shell to fire, as one serviceman complained from the front lines. Even as President Alensky says Ukraine is trying to find a way not to retreat, military officers privately accept that more losses are inevitable this summer. The only question is how bad they will be. Vladimir Putin has arguably never been closer to his goal. We know people are flagging and we hear it from regional governors and from the people themselves, Andrei Yermak, Alensky's powerful chief of staff and entertainment lawyer told Politico, Yermak, and his boss, 
traveled together to some of the most dangerous places to rally citizens and soldiers for the fight. He said, we tell people your name will be in the history books. If the tide doesn't turn soon in this third year of Russia's invasion, it will be the nation of Ukraine as it currently exists that is consigned to the past. That's like the first three, four paragraphs of this Politico article. We tell people your name will be in the history books. That's how Yermak and Alensky are selling uh, the, the people. That is, that is how they are trying to convince people in villages and towns to be sent to the front line to be annihilated by the Russian military. But your name will be in the history books. So go to the front line and, and face certain deletion by the Russian military in order to protect Biden and Newland, in order to fight this proxy war for Biden and Newland and the neocons and Blinken and Sullivan and Ursula and Morell and, uh, and Schultz and Macron and all of the, the globalist political class and the masters, the real puppet masters above these... Uh, these globalist political leaders. Yeah, get, get sent to the front line, face certain annihilation by the Russian military to, to, fight, uh, to fight this proxy war for these guys. And, uh, and the big sell, the big sell is that your name will be in the history books. Maybe, maybe your name will be in the history books. History is, is written by, by the victors, but anyway. That is, uh, that is what Politico is reporting. The article, towards the, towards the middle, end of the article, the, the author holds on to, to much of the, of the fiction, the narratives about, about how, uh, how Putin failed in the early days of the conflict, siege of, of Kiev, and, and how the collective West has failed to provide weapons and money to Ukraine, and that's the reason why why Ukraine is losing, if, if only, if only the Alensky regime received 25 uh, Patriot batteries, the author says, if only the Alensky regime received a million shells in order to, to fight off the Russian military in Kharkov, the author says, and if only the Alensky regime was given an army of 5 million men outfitted in in the Iron Man superhero uh, suit. <laughs> he didn't say that. Um, I'm saying that. That's not the author, that's me. But that's pretty much the argument that the author is making. It wasn't Russia that defeated Ukraine. It wasn't Russia that actually defeated the collective West and NATO, this NATO proxy, the most powerful NATO proxy in all of Europe. It wasn't Russia that, that won this conflict. It was, it was the fact that... Uh, that money and weapons were just not given to Alensky. That was it. Because during the beginning of the conflict, Politico is, is saying in this article, Putin was just, he was just messing up all over the place. Ghost of Kiev, Goat of Kiev, Siege of Kiev. And if only, if only the collective West would have given Alensky a gazillion dollars, and 10 million soldiers, and 500,000 Patriot batteries, then, you know, it would have been lights out for uh, for russia oh boy so uh so that's politico the bbc had this title from the other day russia to grow faster than all advanced economies says the imf Whew, coming from the bbc tatters tatters i tell you tatters tatters the russian economy it is a gas station masquerading as a country with shovels and washing machine ships it's in tatters the sanctions war that was going to turn the ruble into rubble <laughs> biden during the state of the union the ruble is now rubble no one no one brings up that speech that state of the union from biden do they they don't talk about that whole ruble is going to be rubble speech that statement do they nope they don't they don't talk about that one too much Slovakia's Prime Minister, Mr. Fico, Robert Fico, he said that uh, there will be no Ukraine in NATO. Slovakia will not allow Ukraine into NATO. Quote, Slovakia needs a neutral Ukraine. Our interests 
will be threatened if it becomes a NATO member state, because that is the basis of a large world conflict, the Prime Minister explained, as quoted by the news website Novinsk. Fitzo stressed that he will not bow down to any outside pressure. Our partners abroad have been taught that whatever they ask and request from Slovakia, they will automatically get it. But we are a sovereign and self-confident country, he said. Very, very powerful and true words coming from Robert Fitzo, but be careful, Robert Fitzo, because the globalists, they don't like that kind of talk. So, Alensky, he gave an interview to, I believe, PBS on Monday. I think it was PBS. And uh, he always goes to PBS. He likes to give interviews to PBS, Alensky. And uh, he got dressed up in his best green sweatshirt to give this interview. And Alensky said that if no money is given to Ukraine, then it's game over. Game over, bro. Game over. <laughs> Game over, man. It's game over. The aliens are everywhere. It's game over, man. <laughs> That's what Oletsky said. No money, no honey. No money. It is game over. He also said that the collective West, well, the politicians, do not care about Ukraine. He said they don't care about Ukraine. $500 billion given to Ukraine. Some countries have been completely demilitarized. No tanks, no fighter jets, no ammunition. Stockpiles are, are exhausted. Other countries have destroyed their entire economies. I'm talking about you, Germany, and Pirate Schultz. And for Alensky, they just don't care about us. <laughs> they don't care about us. They don't care. They don't care. They don't give me money. I can't buy homes. This means they don't love me. They don't care. All I, all I have to say to collective West politicians is quit, quit playing games with my heart. My heart. Quit playing games with my heart. Why you do me like that? Anyway, that is, uh, that is Alensky. They don't care. They don't care about us. Believe me, if the collective West could defeat Russia, they would have done it. If it meant sending a trillion dollars to Ukraine, if that meant that Russia would be defeated, they would send a trillion dollars. They would print a trillion dollars. If, if defeating Russia meant sending 10 million NATO soldiers into Ukraine, they would have done it, but, but they can't. It's impossible. They can't do these things. It's fiction. There are no more weapons. There are no soldiers to, to enter the conflict in Ukraine. Well, there are, there are soldiers. Um, but, but they're not going to, the countries are not going to, to be too happy if they see their militaries entering, uh, entering the conflict in Ukraine, especially the, the United States, but also the European countries. So if they could, if they could defeat Russia, believe me, they would, but you know, reality is is reality. In fantasy world, sure, deliver 500 Patriot batteries, deliver a trillion dollars, deliver 10 million shells, but you know, we do live in the real world, Alensky. So Pirate Schultz, he is in a panic and he flew to China and one of the goals for Pirate Schultz on his visit to China to meet with Xi Jinping was to try and get China to stop its support of Russia. Politico has an article with the title, Schultz wants Xi to stop Russia's war. Xi wants Europe to stop trade war. So Pirate Schultz, in very much the same way that Merkel in 2013, 2014, when, uh, when Ukraine and, and the NATO soldiers that were fighting with, uh, with Ukraine 
against the Donbass when they were encircled in areas like the Baltsovo, facing certain annihilation. Uh, Merkel, she she called up Putin and ran to to Putin to beg Putin for some sort of a peace, and that's where Minsk came about. But uh, Merkel was in an absolute panic because defeat was coming, and uh, and she called up Putin and she begged begged Putin to to come to some sort of of a peace agreement and Minsk one and Minsk two was was hatched and now you have Schultz pretty much trying to pull the same stunt but this time because he can't speak with Putin even Schultz the other day said in a statement that he will never speak to Putin or at least until Putin removes all of Russia's military including from Crimea then Schultz said he will never ever ever never ever 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 speak to the Russian president so he is doing the next best thing at least in his mind he's doing the next best thing and in a panic he has flown to China and he is trying to convince Xi Jinping to call Putin and to tell Putin to stop so Xi Jinping he uh, he explained to Schultz how things are going to go down and how things should go down with regards to the conflict in Ukraine and reading the reports about what she told uh, Schultz, it definitely looks like the Chinese leader gave, uh, gave a good dressing down to pirate Schultz. Xi said, first, we must prioritize maintaining peace and stability and refrain from seeking selfish gain. Secondly, we must cool the situation and not add fuel to the fire. Third, we must create the conditions for peace to be restored and refrain from further aggravating tensions. Fourth, we must reduce the negative impact on the global economy and refrain from undermining the stability of global industrial and supply chains. Refrain from seeking selfish gain. That's what she told Pirate Schultz. Arg, but I'm a pirate, Xi Jinping. I'm all about selfish gain, matey. Arg. I'm a pirate, Arg. That's what pirates do, selfish gain, Arg. Oh, boy, yeah, he gave uh, Schultz uh, a good dressing down. But, uh, you know, my sources tell me that uh, she, after he, he said these four steps to Pirate Schultz, my sources in China, they are telling me that, that Xi then, uh, then pulled Schultz to the side and, and said, hey, uh, hey, Pirate Schultz, Biden blew up Nord Stream, didn't he? <laughs> And Schultz was like, yeah, <laughs> blew it up. <laughs> She's like, hey, Schultz, Pirate Schultz, I just want to ask you one question before you go, before you get on your, get back on your boat and sail to Germany. Uh, Biden, Newland, they blew it up, didn't they? <laughs> Schultz, yeah, I'm just too chicken to do anything about it. <laughs> yeah, they blew it up. And they told me not to say anything. <laughs> they told me to bury the investigation. Xi Jinping's like, I knew it. <laughs> I knew it. <laughs> anyway, uh, let's let's shift gears and talk about a possible possible attack by uh, Israel towards Iran. Maybe, maybe we don't know. We are getting all kinds of mixed reports, mixed messages. The latest I read is that. Israel is planning some sort of a retaliation to the Iranian retaliation of the bombing of Iran's embassy in Syria by the 20th. I don't know if this is true. Who knows anymore? The Jerusalem Post, they put out an article with the title, The IDF has decided on type, not timing of counterstrike on Iran. And in this article, the Jerusalem Post is saying that Israel is, is not going to rush it. They're going to take their time and they could respond any day now or sometime in 
in the future, the distant future. So who knows? We're going to have to wait. And I've heard different reports about the type of attack that, uh, that is being planned. I've read reports saying that Netanyahu has agreed on, on the targets. I've read reports saying that the targets are going to be military installations. I've read reports saying that they're going to target uh, some places in Tehran. No one knows. No one knows. But I'm pretty confident that that even though the United States is saying that Israel is not telling them what they're planning to do, the Biden White House is saying that uh, Israeli officials are not, are not coordinating with the United States. Whenever they come out with a statement like that, to me, that signals that Israel is absolutely talking with the United States and they're absolutely coordinating with the United States. And 50-50. 50-50, the United States is trying to coordinate or, to, or to, to open up some sort of back-channel diplomacy with Iran in order to see if, if perhaps there could be targets that would not lead to an Iranian retaliation of the Israeli retaliation of the Iranian retaliation for the bombing of the Iranian embassy in Syria. 50-50, something like that could be going on, but who knows, who knows? Um, we're just gonna have to, have to wait and see, but you know, the more, the more this drags on and, and, and if, um, if we don't see an attack into Iran, then I imagine that the more time goes by, the, the less likely that the retaliation from Israel will be an attack into Iran. Maybe it'll be something else. One thing Israel's definitely trying to do is they're trying to get sanctions on Iran, more sanctions on Iran because, of san because Iran already has a boatload of sanctions and they're trying to get more sanctions on Iran, including on the Revolutionary Guard. This is what the foreign minister uh, tweeted Katz, this is what he tweeted the other day, alongside the military response to the firing of the missiles and the UAVs. I am leading a diplomatic offensive against Iran. This morning, I sent a letter to 32 countries and spoke with dozens of foreign ministers and leading figures around the world calling for sanctions to be imposed on the Iranian missile project and that the Islamic Revolutionary Guard Corps be declared a terrorist organization as a way to curb and weaken Iran. Iran must be stopped now before it is too late. And uh, in this post, he mentioned Blinken, Cameron, Baerbach, and just about every foreign minister from the Collective West. When he says 32 countries, he means that he's spoken with the Collective West. And the only phone call you really need to make is to the United States. Call up Blinken, and if Blinken agrees, then the other vassal states will do as the United States orders them to do. But uh, the, the sanctions route, that's, that's a possibility. That's, that, that's a, that I think is, is, is a definite, that you're gonna see more sanctions, especially on Iranian uh, manufacturing, military drone manufacturing. Um, Revolutionary Guard, the Islamic Revolutionary Guard uh, being being labeled as designated as a terrorist organization. That one's going to be tough. That one is going to be hard because you're going to have to make the case that they've engaged in terrorist activities. You're going to have to show that they've actually committed terrorist acts. Maybe it's possible that, that they'll be able to do this, but I don't know. I think that one's going to be a little more difficult, but the sanctions, without a doubt, they're going to get sanctions on Iran. So, Let's let's do a clown world and we will wrap this video up. And France, they have invited Russia to the D-Day ceremony, I believe the 80th, 80th anniversary of D-Day. But but they are not inviting the Russian president Vladimir Putin. France invites Russia to D-Day ceremony, just not Vladimir Putin. Normandy event organizers give Kremlin chief a cold shoulder, shoulder over Ukraine war. So the Kremlin, Peskov, he said that they have not received an official invitation to this event, to the ceremony. 
Russia hasn't received an official invitation, but, uh, you know, Putin, Putin not being invited, whatever, whatever, bro, <laughs> whatever, bro, Macron. Not that Putin is, is going to care, to be quite honest. Why would Putin want to go to, to France to, to be around the collective West leaders that, that despise him, that are jealous of him? Why, why would he want to be around a bunch of leaders that are jealous with hate? <laughs> why? So, whatever. Whatever uh, Russia can, maybe, Russia maybe can send their ambassador to this event and just leave it at that. But uh, that's, that's the statement from Paris with regards to this event. Politico is also reporting that uh, Ursula van der Crazy is in a bit of trouble. She is in a bit of trouble as she is trying to get reelected as EU Commission President. Don't assume van der Leyen is coming back, reports Politico. Trouble, trouble for van der Pirates. Basically, Politico is saying that van der Leyen is, is embroiled in a couple of, of scandals. The one scandal is, uh, is with the jab and a lot of millions of, of dollars in contracts that somehow have disappeared or no one can find them. Anyway, there's, there's that scandal. And there's another scandal which involves hiring someone in, uh, to, to staff her office at a salary of like 10 or 15,000 euros a month. Who, uh, who was a buddy of hers in Germany with the CDU, CSU party. And from what I understand, this hire is not, uh, I guess he's not qualified or he's not the right guy for the job or he didn't go through the right process in order to be hired. And everyone is, is making a stink about it in, in Brussels. So Ursula's in a bit of trouble, but I expect her to, to be reelected. Because the more you fail, the more you are rewarded in the collective West. That is the lesson to teach, to teach children in the collective West. That's right, little Jimmy. <laughs> little Jenny and little Jimmy. The more you fail, <laughs> the, the higher you will go. At least in politics. At least if you're going to enter politics, the more you fail, the higher you will rise. Oh boy. This is not a clown world, but I think it's an interesting story. Ukraine conflict makes Czech arms dealer rich. CSG has seen its profits surge after refurbishing old tanks to sell off to Ukraine. The owner and chairman of the Czechoslovak group CSG, Michael Strand, has now become a billionaire, reaping profits from the Russia-Ukraine conflict, according to Bloomberg. The arms maker has seen its revenue surge amid the conflict, with profits growing almost twofold in 2022 to around $1 billion, and nearly doubling again last year, reaching $1.9 billion. One of the conglomerate's divisions, Excalibur Army, has greatly contributed to the profits, manufacturing munitions, as well as building new and refurbished old Soviet-made weaponry. Follow the money. Now you know why Czech Republic is so ramped up gung-ho about this conflict. Why the, the political class in the Czech Republic, why they are so supportive of, uh, of Project Ukraine. Double profits from 2022 to 2023. Double from 1 billion to 1.9 billion. Project Ukraine made a lot of people very, very wealthy. And thanks to Mike Johnson, it looks like they're going to get the 60 billion as well. So they're going to get that 60 billion and all that's left before they completely ditch. Project Ukraine is, is maybe perhaps that 300 billion in frozen assets. So 60 billion, they, they will be happy with 60 billion. They're going to say, okay, we got the 60 billion, but maybe just maybe they're going to say, you know, let's, let's keep this thing going. 
and uh, let's see if we can get our hands on the 300 billion, and then we're, then we're out. Then we're super happy, and, and we're out of this, this mess. So anyway, that's the video, everybody. TheDuran.Locals.com. We are on Rumble, Odyssey, BitChute, Telegram, Rockfin, and Twitter X. And go to the Duran shop. Look for limited edition merch. The link is in the description box down below. Take care.